The comment section on yesterday's video from Bolt Orange has probably covered everything that I really want to say, but here I am making a video response anyway, and only to one section. Of course, the section that I'm referring to is the the one that grew out of the Traveler part at the beginning about, or ostensibly about, metagaming. Now, the way the situation was described in the video was that a scene of suspicion was role-played out between two players about their two characters, which ended in, in an impasse. A signal which could legitimately cause suspicion, we'll say, was given by one player, and the other player role-played that suspicion by asking questions, which were then you know, shot down. So this is really the crux of the matter. Uh, when this kind of scene happens, is everyone playing fairly? Now in the scene as described in the video, the suspicious character, the player for that character, asked for a role to sense duplicity or something, uh, to see if they could, or if they should, carry on with the suspicion or let it drop. Because no resolution had actually taken place. They had role-played, and for whatever reason, a satisfactory conclusion was not reached. And I suppose it would take a long time to go over all the possible reasons, but just throwing a few out there, the suspicious character player, right, this is the suspicious PC, might be having difficulty compartmentalizing what is in-character versus out-of-character knowledge. And as we know from watching Boltorange's video, that everybody around the table knew that the suspicion-causing character was lying. So there definitely was out-of-character knowledge to separate from in-character knowledge. Not everybody can do that, not everybody's willing to do that, and and all the shades in between. I don't want to do it for this game or whatever. So there's that. Also, there could be a history between the two players which which Chris is not yet aware of, such as the character or the, the player with the, the character causing the suspicion might like to have these secretive backgrounds all the time and might be unreasonably unwilling to give up those details even if a character that is facing them has all the tools to pry those secrets from him. Now, you can also get into things like, well, that shouldn't happen between PCs. Well, again, as we've said before, there's a lot of things that happen between PCs that are regulated by die rolls, and it's just a social thing about whether or not this applies to social roles. So there really isn't a should here, there's a, a tradition, or a habit. Right? Again, it's a, it's a flavor of things. So those two guys could have a history. Or, because the system may have been new to everybody, I'm not really clear on that from my memory of the, of the video, they may not be certain how much of the skills on the character sheet are going to manifest in play and in what ways. And if social dynamics between characters are going to be encouraged. I mean, you have to ask, why is it set up for this amount of duplicity between the player characters if we don't intend this to be role-playing fodder? And if we don't intend this to be role-playing fodder, then it probably shouldn't be there. So there definitely is supposed to be some friction in this group based on agendas that people are keeping secret and, and information they're not sharing. How is this supposed to come out? If I'm interested in playing a character who keeps secrets, what is it about what the other player, player characters do that's going to make me reveal those secrets? And this brings up a point I know I saw in the comments, divergent styles of play. Right? From the simulationist point of view, this must come down to the dice because it's not my skill that we are simulating. It's the character. From the narrative's point of view, I suppose 
that people have to agree that it makes a good story at this point for me to divulge my secrets. And that means we both have to have the same appreciation for what a good story is. Some games in this style will have a means of forcing the revelation, and other games don't. And some of those other games don't because their designers didn't think about it. From the gamist point of view, well, you've got a lot of competition going on on the, on the dark side of gamism, and you have a lot of system forward things, so again, that role comes forward. I need to roll something in order to resolve a question. And you do have a question between these two characters, which needs resolving. And simply role playing between them is not going to be a satisfactory re resolution mechanic for all players. Unless you establish up front what it is that you're looking for between players. And it doesn't sound like that this particular traveler group has that going on yet. So, does this mean that the game is going, you know, is going to fall apart? Or, you know, I don't think so. What would I do in this situation? Well, as Boltorange mentioned, the scene had already been role played out to some kind of conclusion, and then the way the role was handled, it felt like rehashing everything. Like the character was made suspicious, acted on the suspicion, and then asked for a role to be allowed to be suspicious. Well, that right there is, a, is suspicious. And it takes us back to what we were talking about a few weeks ago about framing roles. All right, this is an example of someone with a new game group introducing a new game to them, a lot of details on their mind, clearly making a, a call for a role that isn't framed as well or wasn't framed as well as it could have been. And that's just armchair GMing on my part. Um, As the story is related by Chris, the matter was dropped because of the results of the roll. So it worked out all right in the end. But how could the roll have been framed better, I guess, is something that I could contribute. So again, everybody at the table has out-of-character knowledge that one player character has information relevant to the scene and that they're not going to divulge it that player chooses to have his character grunt, signaling a reaction. And it's up to the other players now, in fact it's forced on the other players now, to interpret that grunt. And it forces them to directly deal with in-character and out-of-character information and decide the legitimacy of any suspicion. Suspicion has been cast on any opportunity for legitimate suspicion because they all know out of character that he's hiding something. Not all players are up to that challenge. So, I think for everybody's peace of mind around the table, I might, as a game master, actually call for a role. Right? I might call for the role from the suspicious player to see how well they're playing their cards close to their vest. Does this come out as a neutral grunt of surprise, or does it come out as a shock of recognition surprise? Right. So I might ask them to make a roll to perform that. Right. How well do you keep it secret? Because we all know there's a secret, so let's minimize the rolling. Right. Rather than having everybody else around the, to around the table roll to detect, or getting into opposed roles between players, some of you are suspicious and some of you aren't. Well, that might be fun in some cases, depending on how much of a point that secrecy is, or the actual secret might be. So those are three different ways that it might be handled, uh, using a role up front to help relieve the strain of IC versus OOC knowledge. As for dealing with clashes of gaming style, really the only way to resolve a clash of, of gaming style, where it comes up annoying various people around the table at different times, depending on what's going on, Really, the only way to deal with that is to be open and honest about it and communicate about it up front, right? Because what this is, is a clash of, of tastes. So while a group can't, I guess, actively predict everything which could come up annoying people, there can be some discussion about how people feel about IC and OOC and how people feel about uh, PC versus PC interaction. You know, 
of any kind, whether it be violent or whether it be uh, socially manipulative or whether it be romance or, or what have you. Discussions of those kinds among mature players who don't know each other and are just looking for a game because, you know, <laughs> there are so few game groups available with a schedule that will match the the working modern individual. It, it just makes sense to, to take that as a as an early precaution. So if in your first session something like this happens, it's definitely time to talk about it before the next session. I hope this in some way contributes to the discussion.